How does Gujao and the Haida Gwaii area inspire author Ian Gill? Let's find out. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted on Tuesdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. Today, my guest is Ian Gill. Ian Gill's novel, All That We Say Is Ours, was published by Douglas and McIntyre. And here's what it's about. Haida Gwaii, the ancient territory of the Haida people, is a West Coast archipelago, famous for its wild beauty and its rich species diversity. But that natural bounty since European contact has been a magnet for industry, which has resulted in tension between the Haida government and industry. All That We Say Is Ours is an incredible story of political and cultural renaissance. Ian discusses the many setbacks, the victories, and landmark legal decisions. Thank you, Ian Gill, for being a guest today. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So first of all, I'll kind of divide this into two questions. How does Haida Gwaii inspire you? Well, it's a remarkable place. Um, and uh, uh, I've been fortunate enough to visit there many times as a guest of the Haida people. Um, and uh, it's actually, it's been uh, sort of compared to the Galapagos um, as a sort of a unique uh, place in the world. Um, and it is totally unique in the world. Um, for those who don't know where it is, it's a group of islands that used to be called, for a little period of time, was called the Queen Charlotte Islands uh, off the northwest coast of British Columbia. So if you know where Prince Rupert is, it's kind of you you go that way for <clears throat> uh, 70 miles or so and you get to Haida Gwaii. Um, and it's just below the Alaska border. So on a clear day from the northern part of um, Haida Gwaii, you can actually see Alaska in the distance. So it's very remote. Um, it's very particular. Uh, it has some of the hallmarks of the rest of the coastal temperate rainforest region. You know, the uh, big runs of salmon and the uh, uh, very large trees and you know, just remarkable flora and fauna. Um, also inhabited by very uh, mm -hmm. uh, longstanding, tough, um, but generous people with an absolutely rich and brilliant culture, a, a history of art and song and dance and uh, and oration that dates back thousands and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And so you mentioned in the introduction sort of contact, and that's the sort of this idea that the colonists came along or the <clears throat> explorers came along as the vanguard of the colonists to follow and sort of contacted, you know, the Haida and uh, everything changed with that sort of encounter as it did all over um, the world, really. Um, I've been recently... Uh, schooled somewhat by somebody uh, of the New Chowna First Nation um, down on Vancouver Island about the concept that people, especially uh, non-native people and especially historians and anthropologists, think of contact as having happened in the sort of 1700s, you know, the mm -hmm. sailboats came around the corner and the soldiers got off or the sailors got off and sometimes the encounters were friendly and sometimes they weren't and then you know, the miners and loggers and the railroad builders turned up and, you know, that was contact. And in fact, this young woman was telling me, she said, you know, contact is still being negotiated. You know, contact isn't the fixed place in time. You know, you can't just say then there was contact and then this happened. Actually, then there was contact and this is still happening. And I guess um, what's really powerful about uh, Haida Gwaii and the Haida people is that, um, I mean, they suffered immeasurably uh, from disease and, and the mm -hmm. sort of uh, depredation of their the resources and everything else. Um, and just sort of, you know, a, a shocking sort of ignorance on the part of the colonizers. Um, but their culture um, uh, persisted. It has had to go underground legally or from mm -hmm. a legal point of view, of, um, you know, just to basically protect what they had. They had to essentially hide um, themselves uh, under the kind of Indian Act for a while. 
Um, but it always there, they never gave up. They never sort of surrendered their sense of their both uh, ownership of Haida Gwaii and its ownership of them, if you will. And so that's now rising to the surface and has been for many years. And the subtitle of the book is Guja and the Reawakening of the Haida Nation, because mm. that term reawakening was chosen particularly to say, you know, it, it's, it's not that they ever really went to sleep. It's just that, you know, to some degree, things went somewhat fallow for a while, while the colonizers got themselves organized and sort of, uh, and, and, you know, um, that whole history of contact and that um, way of uh, different philosophies and different cultures um, coming to know each other and, and um, coming to sort of form relationships with each other, is still going on. Uh, and so that's what's really interesting to me is that um, this isn't just a history book about this happened and then that happened and that's the end of it. The fact is um, there's this massive uh, renegotiation of the kind of terms of engagement, which is ongoing, not just in Haida Gwaii, but in, to some degree all over the world. And the Haida are, uh, are to some degree at the vanguard of that, which is why their story is to me, one of the most compelling ones about um, any of these encounters that are still going on um, globally. And I mean, your book is a combination of archives, first and second person interviews. And of course, Gu Zhao is, is prominent in your, in your book. Can you tell um, viewers about him, a little bit about him? Well, he's a remarkable man. He um, uh, you know, he was born in Haida Gwaii, grew up there, um, uh, had a bit of a rebel streak in him right from the outset, which is good, um, <laughs> and, you know, which I sort of write a bit about in the book. Uh, at a very young age, he became um, uh, sort of put by the chiefs, basically, into the role of um, the president of the Council of the Haida Nation. Uh, and the uh, Council of the Haida Nation was a, um, and, and still is, is a representative group of the Haida people. Um, and Gu Zhao came into that role um, with a very activist mentality and kind of an agenda, which frankly turned out to be perfect for the times. And the, the chiefs chose wisely. You know, they chose somebody who is incredibly articulate, comfortable uh, in the culture, um, a brilliant representative of uh, Haida values and um, Haida mythology, frankly. Um, very articulate, uh, a great drummer, um, as it happens, among other things, uh, and an artist, a carver, um, just a kind of a, a very whole person, um, mm -hmm. uh, but wholly unafraid too, because at the time that he was uh, put into this position, the Haida were lining up to basically try and shut down logging in um, um, an area called Lyon Island, which is in the southern part of the archipelago, um, and basically stop the rampant clear cutting of their territory. Um, and uh, you know, at the time, um, they were organizing to blockade logging, which they did. Um, more than 80 uh, people ended up, including a lot of elders, ended up being arrested by the RCMP on the logging roads. It was national news at the time. I was a reporter at the Vancouver Sun at the time, um, somewhat freshly arrived from Australia and reported on the issues. And then, uh, you know, the long story short, um, the uh, Guayhanas. Uh, National Park or Park Reserve was finally formulated out of that and most of the um, archipelago was protected from logging and is now into a very creative and again groundbreaking co-management uh, arrangement with the Canadian government. So Guja was a political spokesman and leader throughout all of that um, and uh, a great strategist and uh, you become became relied upon to basically sort of help lead the um, the front facing efforts of the Haida people to um, stare down industry and um, the colonial governments and begin to wrest control back of their lands and resources and of their culture on their own terms. And he has remained, um, you know, he has since been actually uh, 
uh, made a hereditary chief. He has remained uh, a very powerful and passionate leader and spokesman and is kind of revered around the world for the work that he did on behalf of his own people and has um, traveled extensively and spoken passionately about the rights and title of Indigenous people to govern themselves and be uh, masters and mistresses of their own destiny. Mm -hmm. Now, Ian, your book came out 2009 in Canada, 2010 in the U.S. If if you were to add a chapter to what's been going on, what would you, what would you add? So it was just re-released in paperback, actually, um, uh, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So I did go back and uh, revise a little bit, and then mm -hmm. I actually added to the timeline because you have a few years have taken place. Um, I think that. Uh, to some degree, I wouldn't write a great deal more about Haida Kwai. Um, there's all sorts of things going on there. And um, the Haida, you know, I was up there last September and they have this absolutely beautiful um, uh, the Haida House uh, resort that they built these cabins at and they're you know, great hosts. You know, and, and that's an economic project. There's a beautiful museum that um, was only just being sort of finished off at the time that I was uh, writing the book. There's all sorts of your tangible and visible progress um, uh, and uh, some really good things going on. And just, you know, I mean, it's still one of the most amazing places in the world to go and see and be in and appreciate. Um, but I'd probably write more about what's happened around the world rather than, you yeah. know, in yeah. Haida Gwaii, because partly what the Haida did, they, as I said earlier, they were kind of at the vanguard of some of the, not just thinking, but action around this. We're now starting to, or have over the last few years, um, I mean, the Haida were very successful in the courts, for instance, with various court cases, which have become um, precedent cases for others. And so when you look across British Columbia in particular, there's several other nations now who've kind of taken their cue from the Haida um, and either had significant court battles or have written their own constitutions, which is something that the Haida did. They sort of mm -hmm. thought, well, we're going to govern our territory. We better have our own constitution. Um, so they've done a lot of kind of groundwork, which has now um, reverberated around the world. So it's almost like um, uh, you know, if I wrote a book about um, the people and the place of Haida Gwaii before, what I'd add to that, I guess, is what I might call the Haida effect. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I think that's, frankly, um, something that <laughs> as, as proud of the Haida might be about what they managed to do for themselves. I think they deserve praise for what they've done for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that when I was reading your book, that was one thing that was really resonating with me is, you know, the difference that they've made. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Ian Gill, thank you very much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. I appreciate your time and for you coming to chat about all that we say is ours. I will put links down below in the description box so viewers can purchase a copy of your book. And also I'll put links. You've got so many different involvements. So I'll put to your website, to Salmon Nation and... Uh, Eco Trust and 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 Upstart and Crow. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> that's right. It's independent bookstore. I'm right. like, there's something else, and it's not coming to me right now. Oh my no. goodness! <laughs> yes, links to Upstart and Crow. So thank you yeah. so much, Ian. And do come and visit if you make it out west. Uh, we'd be happy to have you in the store. Oh, I would love to. When I, I was when I was looking on your website, I'm like, this place looks incredible. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's fun. Well, we'd be, we welcome everybody to come and take a peek. Thank you so much, Ian. And thank you everyone for watching.